Hello, world and friends and everybody out there. Um, for today's episode, you know me, we do a lot of videos here. And so today we're going to do 50 questions to ask a guy if you want to know who he really is. And so I got my buddy Tanner here. And so he's going to be answering some questions. So ladies, be taking the notes. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, we got eligible bachelors right here too. And so, you know, it's, it's tough here in college, you know, um, there's, you know, it's just that I don't even know. We're gonna get to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's do it. Brain on. Okay. So question numero uno: If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? If I could go anywhere in the world. Texas. Texas. I would go to Texas. Texas. You still have the sweet freedom of the United States because I've been abroad before and uh, you know although I appreciate all the traditions all the cultures I've seen mm -hmm. um, I, there's no place like home so mm -hmm. probably want to stay home but Texas man they got some good sweet I got a sweet tooth Texas is the place to go mm -hmm. and uh, Seems like everything's just more fun down there. Okay. That is for sure. Huh. All right. Okay. So, uh, I'm, uh, you can have that question. Um, so, we'll, we'll go on to the next one. Too. Question number two. Question number two for you, JD. Okay. Are you a morning person or a night person? Oh, this is a good one. Um, <laughs> I am not a morning person, so don't. Don't, uh, you don't want to see me in the morning. I'm, I'm a night owl, actually, so... Don't hit him up before noon. Yeah, I'm telling you, yeah. do not. That's I'm, not a good idea. Yeah, I'm knocked out, you know, sawing logs, and so... Right. Um, like, props to anyone who's a morning person. I mean, you are truly amazing. You're a miracle to me, and, you know, you God made you for a reason because things have to be done in the morning, but that's... That's just not me. I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's that's that. So um, Keep okay. speaking truth, brother. Yeah. So that's uh, all right. That's what we have next? Uh, third one. Do you prefer making plans or following along with what someone else planned? I am a huge scheduler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> man, I literally, I sit here, I pull out my Google Calendar every couple hours just oh. to make sure I'm on track, make sure I know my appointments for the day, make sure I know where I have to be, when I have to be there. <laughs> like, I'm always, like, on top of my stuff uh, uh, when it comes to where I got to be. I'm always, like, uh, I'm, I'm running around a lot, and I have to be on top of my stuff, so I, I got a plan. I really, I gotta know what's going on, and the only one I trust is myself. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I, I'm the opposite. Like sometimes I can be, but other times I just rather. <laughs> and so that's just that's just how it is. That's how we. That's who we be. Okay. Um, All right. Number four for you. Do you have a mentor in life that you've continuously looked up to? Um. Oh, we're getting deep, man. Yeah, that's big. Oh, Dude, it's only number four. four. Yeah. Huh, they really want to get to know me. What did we get ourselves into? Lord knows, um, but thankfully I do. Like, uh, I'd say my dad, yeah, he's a good mentor, and so I'm lucky to have a father. And shout out to all fathers, good father. True. And so, yeah. True. I don't want to get too old, to be mushy. True. I love you, dad, I love you. <laughs> I um, mean, I'd actually, I'd have to go to the other end of that. I would say my mother. I would okay. actually say mother's my mother's my number one mentor, man. She she taught me how to treat a woman right, especially, mm. and that like that is huge. That's awesome. And hey, you know what they always say, man? They always tell they always tell the daughters, watch how this man treats his mom. Mm. That's how he's gonna treat you. Mm. And I not wrong, huh. not wrong. And uh, so, shout out to my mom. Shout out to all the moms out there too. Yeah. You guys are, you guys are instrumental in creating solid men and women in this world. Amen. That is no doubt, no doubt. Amen. 
Mothers are what make the world go round. No. Okay, so we're kind of both through that one. So good, but <laughs> number five, you can have it. Um, when do you feel most? Oh, okay. Uh, vulnerable. Vulnerable. Okay, this is all. Uh, now we're getting even more mushy. Jeez. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, I. Oof. <laughs> I am not one to open myself up in general. So, you know, if you are a female that's not in my family and you find that I open myself up to you and just really doing it in general, talking about my life, kind of the stuff that's really shaped me into who I am. Uh, that's probably when I feel most vulnerable in general. And if you are someone who's, you know, heard my story, then you're in that category. So I guess that would be it for me. Oh, fuck. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. Do I want to answer this one? I'll say a little something. All right. I don't know something. Um, <laughs> when I feel most vulnerable. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah, he sits there and he holds his chest and oh, he does it more than somebody in the the college theater we have out here. Yeah, just like uh, I'd say, okay, speaking in front of people, I'd say so. Um, and when I have to like, tell my story or say something personal, or even like group settings, so that I'd say that. So yeah, um, but yeah, short and sweet though. So uh, <laughs> oh. We'll let you take this one. Number six, where is the one place you've lived that has actually felt like home? Oh, okay. Huh. Wow, so, huh. I've lived in quite a few houses, a couple of houses here in the United States and outside the United States, uh, but um, because I'm from Haiti, I would have to say Haiti is home, and home isn't a house. Home is where family is, so wherever family is actually is like home, so... I think that's the best answer I can give. There you go. Okay. Does that work? That works. <laughs> uh, okay. If you could change anything about yourself, what would it be and why? Okay. That is a tough one, man. Um, I don't know, man. I'm not one to sugarcoat. I, I am one who will always tell you straight how it is and uh, sometimes I wish I was better at, um, I don't know. It's not like I necessarily want to sugarcoat and I want to lie about it, but I guess I wish I was better, like, really filtering. Not necessarily always having the, well, I'm going to say this because this is what you need to hear approach. Um, yeah, I guess I wish I was just better at, uh, really not only getting the point across, but... You know, really, I guess. You know, and I guess you just really have to find that balance between, you know, sticking to how it is and sugarcoating it. And I guess I just need to not be as blunt. And <laughs> yeah, if I'm being if I'm being brutally honest, that would be it. Next one. Did I skip one? Number eight. No, you're good. What are you most proud of accomplishing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here we go. No, I want to be a. F I want to be funny about this. Um, <laughs> I have to be funny about this. Okay. Let's hear. Um, so when I was little, I was like uh, ten years old, and so there was this mutton button um competition at the state fair in Missouri. Hey, so. what? Mutton busting, and so <laughs> mutton is busting. Mutton busting. <laughs> it's like bull riding, and so but um, I was only ten, so we had to use the sheep, and so these were pretty big sheep, so I wasn't like, oh, this is gonna be easy. So uh, me, this uh, city boy, this tropical island character <laughs> from Haiti, is out uh, in Missouri in the sticks with the with the people there. Uh, <laughs> And I show him a thing or two how to mutton bust. Oh. I win the championship. And so, like, I got, like, a hoodie, mutton busting champion. It was red. I got a trophy. I got 10 bucks cash. 10 bucks cash. And so, cash. yeah, I did it. And so that, I think oh. I'm pretty proud of that. That's, 
that was ten bucks. My yeah, ten bucks. I can get you a bunch of baseball cards back then, uh-huh. man. I, I collected baseball cards all the time. That's what I'm talking about. Some mutton busting right there. Oh, mutton busting. Call me up if you if you want any yeah pointers. <laughs> so um <clears throat> okay nine. What would your dream vacation consist of if money wasn't a factor? Um, you know, I'm a firm believer in the term uh, play smart, not hard. And so I could really take this question, and if money wasn't a factor, then that means this vacation could last forever. <laughs> yeah. So it'd be a lifestyle, Ooh, boy, yeah. which if yeah. I had to live this lifestyle... <laughs> I would just tour baseball parks. And okay. I love baseball. I'd hit some other sporting events when it's not baseball season. But that's that's how I'd live my life. That is it's what I would do. Okay. Because no two games are the same. That's right. So, so uh, you get the the sweets, I bet like the box seat. Oh, the, oh you already nice know. Though. You are. You'll get okay. the meals provided. Okay. Bring the family. Bring the friends. It'd be great. That'd be lit. Be lit. Be. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Number ten. Can you honestly say you love what you do every day? Yeah. And yeah. what is it you do every day? <sighs> That's yeah. Breathing in that. Yeah, they're they're getting to know you here. Yeah. They're getting to know you. They gotta know what you do every day. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm a student athlete, and so I'm here at Taylor, um, living the life, you know. Most certainly. Great friends. Most certainly. Mm-hmm. And also, I'm most certainly not a student athlete. I am far too lazy for that, um, as you probably figured out <laughs> when I said I live by the, uh, the play smart, not hard approach. Um, <laughs> it has brought me success. Um... But <laughs> I guess I could step it up in the effort a little bit. If we're, if we're being honest, I could step it up in the effort a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, waking up every day, look. There um, you go. But I'm not a morning person. Um, so. All right. Uh, Eleven. What is one thing in life that makes you feel alive? This one, alive. folks, is easy. Easy. I 100% love calling games. Uh, I'm actually a sports announcer here at Taylor University. Uh, I do volleyball games, I do basketball games, and it's it's a thrill because you build up that crowd, they build you right back up, you give that energy to the players, the players bring it right back to you. It's one big thrill. If you have a good team and a good crowd, um, you can really you can really make something happen. And you get your adrenaline pumping, like you can hit vocal ranges you didn't even think you can hit, and it's one hundred percent adrenaline. <laughs> vocal like range. that is immediate life right there. For that, sure. Is, that is so cool. For That's sure. Yeah. Number twelve, are you a cat person or a dog person? Oh my gosh, okay. Oh no. The ladies are not gonna like this. Uh oh. The ladies are not gonna like this. So close your ears. Um oh, sure might be good. good. I'm allergic to cats. Uh, um, oh, I am as well. And then we have two dogs at home, but I like dogs. You know, I uh, I had a dog, Angel, way back when. She, it, she died, um, and then we had a bunch of litters, and so I, I love dogs then. But since we had those two dogs that we have now, I don't really like dogs. Because um, I'm kind of a germaphobe sometimes. <laughs> like, dogs can just be a little, a little for me. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but... Like, if, if if it's someone else's dog, I'll be I'll love on it and I'll be like I'll like show it respect because you know they're majestic animals. I mean like they're, they're cool and I liked them once, but it's just the two dogs I have now they made it bad for me. So so that's that. And then they were probably or whatever. So whatever. That's all. Ah, um, thirteen. If you could change one thing about the world, what would it be and why? I would honestly, I would get rid of the mainstream media. <laughs> I would a hundred percent get rid of the mainstream media because what they have absolutely done 
is the goal is now they will not report on what necessarily is the most important, but they report on what will rile people up, what will get them reading. And there's a lot of false information in that. So people have different views. You see this in the political world now where people's views are shaped off of mainstream media and not from actually having conversations, actually learning about the world itself, about the country. And you have people who are growing to hate each other, literally about what they're just reading on Twitter when they wake up in the morning. And seriously, like that makes the world a sucky place. Like you don't even feel like you can have conversations and get to know people anymore because you automatically just want to identify with that category that you read on social media or whatever mainstream news outlet and which kind of causes you to judge and think you know people before you really even get their name so I guess that's just kind of something unfortunate that's really been trending over the last few years and uh, it's something I'd love to see changed for sure for sure all right 14 if you won the lottery what is the first thing you do with your money Mm. What? Ah. Oh. Because it's a Christian school, I would tithe first. But, um, yeah, yeah so, nah. I, yeah, I would. I would. I would. Uh, charity. Do charity, everybody. Um, but I would, uh, probably. Hey! What are you doing here, bro? Say hi to the. Say hi to the. Say hi to the folks. This is, uh, uh the freshman. Hey, people. Uh, Andrew. I do not know that guy. Cool, yeah. he seems yeah. like a good guy, though. I am. He's seems a baseball like a player. Yeah. Okay. All right. He's, he's Speaks my show. language. All right. Um, <laughs> I dig it. Yeah, so I would. I, I, yeah. So that's the first thing I would do. Yeah, that's, I think it's good. Yeah. All right.